uh, here we'll break down the Hello World program just so you can understand exactly what's going on with the program and how it works. It's a simple program, but we'll go through it piece by piece so you can understand the code. So to look at Hello World, it starts off at the top with an include statement, hashtag include standard IO, stdio stdio.h. So at the, uh, hashtag include, anything with a hashtag in front of it is what's called a compiler directive. So it tells, it's not really a piece of code, it tells the compiler to do something special. And include tells the compiler to include whatever the file is uh, to the right. So hashtag includes to stdio.h says take this file stdio.h and include it, it right here in the code. So that so it just basically it cuts and pastes. It takes that stdio.h and pastes it to the beginning of this file. Now, in this case, stdio.h uh, is a library, standard library. It's, in fact, it stands for standard IO. And standard I.O. library, it has all the, the standard I.O. input-output functions like printf for printing. So if you ever want to do printf, you've got to include the standard I.O. library. So this basically takes the library, the .h file for the library, the header file for the library, and includes it at the top. Now the .h file, what that does is it just takes all the library functions and defines them. Uh, it doesn't define all the library functions. It, it defines their inputs and outputs. It doesn't have all the code for them, but it says each function, here's what it takes one input, two out, one output, something like that. It lists that. It's what are called function prototypes. So, but the point is that if you want to include a library, use a library, then you have to include it at the top, include at least this header file at the top of your code. So uh, stdio, if you want to use printf function for printing, you've got to include standard io.h. So you do that, you, and that's at the top. And you can include any number of libraries depending on what type of coding you're doing, but you know, we'll stick with the standard library. So standard io.h, you include that at the top. Now then, uh, inside the code, Oh, yeah, so printf is inside standard IO, and that's what, exactly why we're, we're including that. So that's the first line. Now, inside the program, uh, after we've done the include, you have the main function. So there's a function defined called main. And we'll talk in more detail about functions uh, a little bit. But the main function, it starts off with this main open parentheses, close parentheses. This is where all the, the execution starts. So when it sees that main, it says, okay, this is where I want to start running my code. When it's time to run the code, I go to the beginning of the main and run from there. Okay? So main marks the beginning of the code. All execution starts at the main. So every C program or C++ program has to have a main in it. Now, curly brackets. Uh, after the main, there's an open curly bracket, then there's a, lot of, there's a little code, and then there's a closed curly bracket. So curly brackets are used to group statements together into what they're going to call scopes. Uh, so, but the idea here is that if there's a, a function, so the main is a list of instructions. In our case, it's, very, it's one, function, one instruction. But you can have many instructions inside your main function, right? All of them have to be grouped together in curly brackets. So you have an open curly bracket, then you have all your instructions, and then you have a closed curly bracket. And then all those instructions in between the curly brackets are part of main. So whenever you start executing, you execute the main, you execute all those instructions one at a time from top. Not all of them, depending on control flow, but you start executing at the top of those instructions. And so that's the idea. Uh, all functions have to start and end with curly brackets. Now, inside, their, inside our function, our main function, we have a printf, print statement. And that just basically prints to the screen by default. Uh, it, inside the, the, the parentheses, you put in quotes whatever you want to print. So in our case, we want to print the word, the, the phrase, hello world. So you say printf, and then in parentheses, you have quotes, hello world, close quotes. And uh, there's a semicolon at the end of the print statement, at the, after the print statement. That's standard in C. These traditional statements, uh, assignment statements, and so forth, function calls, you put a semicolon at the end after your, uh, at the end of your statement. So the C knows that the line has ended. And note that um, that means that the indentation can, doesn't matter. The spacing indentation in a file doesn't matter at all. All it's looking at is semicolons. So you can take, say you got a program that has tw is 20 lines long. You can put them on the same physical line in your text editor. It could be never hitting return. You can just have one long line with 20 statements. As long as you put semicolons between them, C will execute it just fine. So that's what the semicolons are for. Now, uh, this is an, a main. This is a different main. Uh, but it does exactly the same thing as the first main. So in quotes inside hello, uh, in the original main, we said hello, comma, world, then slash n. 
So there's, you'll notice a slash n. This is a special character. So hello world is clear. It just prints the word hello world. Then the slash n is a carriage return, a new line. So whenever it sees a slash n, it goes to the next line, which means that if you didn't put the slash n, it wouldn't go to the next line. So for instance, in the program that we have up here, this main right here, it says hello. It first does a print hello. Then it prints world. But notice that there's no slash n in between. So what that means is it'll print hello, and then on the same line, it will print world, because we didn't put a new line. Then prints a new line, so anything else we print after that would be on the next line. So that slash n is a special character. And there are several of these special characters that you can print uh, in quotes. But uh, we won't belabor that, because this isn't the type of thing that's actually particularly important for an Arduino, because you're not generally doing a lot of string manipulations with Arduinos. Uh, you can, but there's generally no need, since you're not printing anything, right? You're not having a screen, generally. So it's not something we worry about. But slash n is useful, because uh, carriage return is something you, always, you often want to print. So, and even in the Arduino, when we start using a serial interface, we'll be printing, printing stuff to the screen for diagnostics and debugging and stuff like that. And we'll want to put character turns in there so that we can read the text. Thank you. Mm -hmm.